I just don't get this whole Game Pass thing. Like, why are people talking about it all the time? Well, let me explain it to you. Who, you? I don't see how it could be profitable. Only a dollar for your first three months. A dollar? Yep. And for me, it's perfect. All new releases on day one. But Xbox has no games. Well, how about these? <laughs> Hello, I want to talk to you guys about fanboys today and how I feel like this is an issue that has been getting worse and these social media companies, they're more than happy to have this type of content, uh, this console warring type of content that the fanboys love to post uh, because it gets them more engagement and more reactions, even though it causes more divisiveness and uh, they don't really care because they're all about the advertising revenue. And then you have these fanboys who post this stuff because they want to grow as an influencer and this is a really quick way to do it because it gets them more engagement and more reactions and plus these social media platforms are promoting it. Now uh, I want to talk about Xbox Game Pass as well because that was the reason why there was a lot of uh, console warring uh, and Xbox Game Pass was trending over the weekend and the Xbox fanboys were very happy about it, which got the PlayStation fanboys involved and they felt like they had to defend their console and their services as well. So let's talk about those two things in this video. Now, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And we also have a Discord server, so make sure to come along and join us there. And I'll leave a link in the description below. Okay, let's start with Game Pass because uh, Xbox Game Pass was trending over the weekend. We had one of the IGN editors, Destin, uh, I forgot his last name, but he tweeted about the value of Game Pass, which uh, a lot of other influencers also decided to uh, tweet about as well. And it became a sort of copy pasta thing where uh, people talked about the value of Game Pass and how it was really only just $1 for the first three months, which is a saving of $45, which seems like a pretty good value if you ask me. And uh, obviously, uh, if you don't know, Game Pass is like the Netflix service on Microsoft's Xbox and also on PC as well. So you pay like a monthly fee, $15, $180 a year, and then you get a selection of like three, 400 games on the service. Some games will leave after a while, but there are some that are indefinite. Most of the first party titles are pretty much indefinitely on the service. Uh, so a lot of people, uh, a lot of Xbox fans feel like that's really good value. Now, what we had was that uh, people suddenly started to think that these influencers were tweeting about Microsoft's Xbox Game Pass service and felt like they were getting paid to talk about it or getting paid off, right? Which a lot of the influencers and Destin from IGN obviously uh, said they weren't getting paid anything for it. It was just a tweet on their own accord. And that uh, for the Xbox fans, they felt like they were really uh, validating what they've been saying all along, that Xbox Game Pass was really good value. And, you know, it could have been left there, but uh, the Xbox fans felt like they had to, I guess, uh, do more uh, because while it was trending, they felt like they had to uh, make something as big and loud as possible uh, so that you get more reactions and more engagement. So these Xbox fanboys, uh, they posted a lot of stuff that was also disparaging towards the PlayStation fans to, I guess, kind of get them to or bait them into a reaction. And so there was a lot of stuff like uh, where there were a lot of memes where PlayStation fans were salty or mad or angry that they didn't have Game Pass on their system. And so, uh, and you know, for the most part, it really worked because PlayStation fans ended up reacting to this type of content. But uh, PlayStation fans, uh, rather than just saying things like, well, Xbox Game Pass is a really great service and I'm happy for you guys, it became more like, well, uh, why would you want Game Pass anyways? You're not actually helping the devs. Uh, I'd much rather pay $70 for my games and have quality content rather than pay for uh, a monthly service where I just generally get low quality content. So then it became more about like, well, Xbox has low quality games. Uh, they don't have any good exclusives. Like PlayStation has great exclusives like The Last of Us or uh, 
Ghost of Tsushima or God of War. Xbox has Halo Infinite and people started to post pictures of Craig who obviously if you don't know Craig uh, he's the guy he's the brute from Halo Infinite uh, where last year's showing uh, it looked really bad and he became a kind of meme for how bad Xbox was doing. So uh, then we pretty much had just mud slinging from both sides and then we had things like well uh, if you want uh, great quality games you should be on PlayStation 5 because it's more like a fine dining service whereas on Xbox it's more like it's an all-you-can-eat buffet you get lots of games but they're not very good quality uh, and so on and so forth so I find that fanboys particularly console fanboys they're really talking about very minor differences most of the time given that these boxes in reality just play 90% of the same games anyway so they just play the same FIFA in Assassin's Creed and yes uh, admittedly Game Pass is a pretty big topic but I would say that uh, a lot of the other things are generally quite petty things to bring up in an argument things like well uh, Microsoft Studios are not as good as PlayStation Studios uh, PlayStation has made more be uh, better exclusives over the past four or five years and then they go on to proceed uh, listing all the Metacritic scores for all the PlayStation games versus the Xbox games and so I find that a l really petty uh, because uh, if you want PlayStation games, get a PlayStation console. If you want Xbox games, get an Xbox uh, console. And I think, but 90% of the time, uh, I think you're going to be happy with either system. So I don't see why people can't let others enjoy the other system without actually putting the other one down is my main issue. So I think the social media companies are a big part of the problem because they see a lot of this and they, all they really see is the engagement and reactions and they don't really aren't concerned about the content. Uh, and even if they see the content, maybe they're actually happy to promote this type of divisiveness. I don't know, but I think uh, the fanboys are more than happy to oblige because they're also trying to grow their accounts as well and get more followers. So if they see that Twitter is promoting this type of content, then they're also going to provide that content. So it's a very vicious cycle. So I think one solution is that if you follow Sony only accounts or Xbox only accounts, is to also follow other content creators out there who enjoy a mix of gaming across different platforms. And that way you get a a better uh, narrative or a mix of narratives uh, rather than if you only follow uh, Xbox only or Sony only accounts and I think the other thing of course is uh, if you don't like a lot of this console warring stuff is to unfollow all of the topics on Twitter and also uh, from content creators who post that stuff uh, is to also not follow them I'm not saying to cancel or block them I'm saying you can still converse with them I'm just saying that um, uh, if you don't like that type of content uh, then probably be better to be more aware and not actually react to that stuff okay so that's going to be it let me know your thoughts on the whole fanboys issue and uh, what you think of the whole situation at the moment and uh, let me know if uh, these social media companies like twitter and youtube are actually making it worse um, and uh, that's going to be it for this one so if you like this video make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys in the next video